What's going on guys? Bart here with Tully Television. I want to thank all of you for stopping by, liking, commenting, sharing, all of that beautiful YouTube stuff. And today I want to get into the continuation of our Echo reviews here. We just got done with the What If series and I wanted to continue our journey along with Echo. Um, I'm going to touch on some stuff from episode one that I discovered between that review and this review, so I'll get into that in a moment. But uh, it's Alkway, uh Cox as Meyer, Maya, not Meyer. <laughs> uh, Chask Spencer as Henry Black Crow Lopez. Tanto Cardinal as Chula, Graham Green as Scully, uh, Dev DeVry Jacobs, and if you remember that name, literally, uh, she was in our last review of What If, she was the voice of uh, uh, Kahari, uh, she's Cousin Bonnie, Cody Lightning is Biscuits, Maya's other cousin, uh, Darnell Bishaw is young Maya. I thought I'd include her because she'll have some uh, scenes throughout the series. Morningstar uh, Angeline is Lohawk, a descendant of Maya and her people. Uh, Danny McCollum is Tukolo, another ancestor of Maya and her people. Andrew, Andrew Howard is Zane and uh, uh, someone who works for Kingpin and Thomas Sullivan is Vicky who uh, checks the shoes in at the roller rink that uh, Black Crow Henry Lopez owns as a uh, front obviously for his uh, dealings with the Kingpin and other uh, nefarious situations. Now, what I wanted to touch on that uh, I was a little unaware of, and I apologize, is that in episode one, when we've seen the creation story of these people, uh, of this tribe, I didn't realize that that's kind of the similar creation story that that actual tribe believes in, that they do believe that they're descendants from beings who came from another dimension, another reality, and integrated themselves in with the people of this planet and uh, injected basically their DNA in with our DNA over the years, if you will, right? And uh, Danny McCollum is the actress who plays Tukolo, the first main ancestor that we see who winds up taking over the tribe. And in this episode, we start off with Lohawk, or Lohawk, uh, in a game that I'm going to kind of call a mix between rugby and lacrosse, and her and her people, Maya's people, and another tribe are fighting for some land, and they're doing it with this game instead of using bloodshed and war, uh, you take some of your best warriors and you face them off against these other warriors and whoever wins that game will win um, the land or whatever have you uh, that's at stake. And Lowak Lo and her people won. Of course, you know, um, we see that the women in this tribe, especially the descendants of Tukolo specifically, do have a connection to some powers or higher intuition, or um, you know things to that de to that degree. We'll learn later on in the series uh, about Maya's mother and her connection to these things and Chula and stuff like that, but um. So that's how this episode starts. 
and basically Biscuit decides to drop off some supplies to Maya. Uh, he was using his grandmother's uh, postal truck, so to speak. Uh, Chula is his grandmother also, and she allows him to use the mail truck on occasion. And when he brought her over some supplies, Maya convinced him to bring her to town uh, for another thing. Uh, that other thing winds up being uh, one of the better scenes in the whole uh, series so far, you know, if we're taking it from hindsight of review episode one and two, this does have one of the better, uh, like, at least an interesting uh, sequence of, event, uh, of events. Uh, we also... Uh, see that Chula is talking to a bunch of people about the powwow that's getting ready to happen uh, at that point, like within a few days or what have you, where they're setting up what tent goes where and, and such. And that's when she finds out that Maya is back in town. Uh, she plays it off like she knew, but then she goes to talk to Henry and Henry kind of lets her know that as far as he, under his understanding, Maya is not going to be in town that long because uh, she had approached him about helping her against the kingpin. But his concern is not disrupting the peace so he can save his people, at least not shake the ground they're, they're, they're living on, so to speak by getting into a war with the kingpin because uh, most of these people are not going to be able to, uh, you know, defend themselves against someone who's willing to do just about anything to win. She gets mad and that's when uh, she decides to uh, go the route of having Biscuit help her. But in the meantime, Chula talks to Henry and is satisfied with the answer enough because she doesn't want Maya around like that anyway. Uh, we pick up with Biscuit and Maya on this bridge. We hear a train coming and Maya connects his phone to her so he can track her and she jumps off the bridge and lands on the train. Now, I'm kind of glad that they made it to where she didn't stick the landing, where she almost fell off, because, you know, it would have been like, come on, man. You know, but she gets on finally and steadies herself and winds up setting an explosive to a train car. Um, i trying to see if I wrote down. Uh, I think it's called like D9X, the D9X train car uh, that's there. And as she was getting ready to leave, her prosthetic leg gets caught between two of uh, the train locks, so to speak, and it crushes her prosthetic leg, but uh, makes her stuck. And this is when we start seeing... Her hands start doing a glowy thing, and she's able to use uh, some sort of strength in order to separate these two hitch locks or whatever. However, whatever is locking the two train cars together, whatever the technical term of that is, she's able to separate that enough for her to squeeze her prosthetic leg out. And she goes to Scully to have it repaired and, uh, and has the promise of getting it, uh, getting an upgrade, so to speak, uh, or little does she know she's going to get an upgrade to it. Uh, this is all coming together and he tells her about her uh, story about how the women are descendant of these, of this Tukalo and the grandmother was able to trace the roots back to her. And so establishing even more of Maya's lore and backstory. 
and her connection with the people. And um, the last one of the last things I want to talk about is this uh, character Vicky, who works at the Roland Rink, who checks in the shoes and everything. We see him make a phone call about the about having information on the woman who took down the king. And basically, uh, because we see, I don't think I mentioned this in episode one, but in episode one, we see Maya uh, be stabbed uh, and have to stitch herself up with dental floss. And um, she winds up going to a doctor and getting it fixed anyway, uh, with the help of Henry. Um, because he need a doctor on staff that, you know, you don't want to go to the hospital with the type of jobs you're doing. And I haven't explained that. But, um, that's what prompted her more to, uh, you know, strike this car because it was basically, we'll learn how important it was, but basically, uh, it landed a big hit into the Kingpin's empire and uh we're probably gonna get an eventual meeting between him and maya but that's pretty much where the episode ends where we see uh that she's being recognized her, her some of her own people are trying to reject her her own family she doesn't want to tell her cousin bonnie she's in town and the only one she seems to really trust in town is uh, Black Crow, Henry, and Scully. So we'll see if um, Maya will slow it down and not go against the Kingpin or convince her people that she's doing the right thing. And we'll see more of how her possible powers will grow and affect her and those around her. Um, I do apologize again for not knowing the full story of the tribe that was uh that's in this series and their origin stories i thought it was marvel just kind of putting in uh a bit of shenanigans i mean they took slight liberties uh but for the most part this tribe does believe <coughs> that their ancestors came from another reality into this reality. So for the lack of that information, I apologize. Uh, but I still stand by uh, liking this series so far. I mean, yes, my the actress who plays my may not uh, be the best fighter on screen, right? Um, she's not exactly... Uh, you know, I don't know, like, you can tell that some of the fight scenes with her are a little slow, and, um, that she's working with good stuntmen, uh, you can tell that she's really doesn't have a background of fighting of anything, but, uh, with how well the stunt work has been, and how well Charlie Cox did with her in the first episode. Uh, I'm particularly um, prone to letting it slide because I think that to learn about these people and to kind of learn a little bit about Maya, I think is uh, kind of a fun experience so far. I It's not a show like I was particularly clamoring for, like, oh yeah, Echo, ooh! You know, I'd rather see a Wonder Man series. I'd rather see uh, any of the uh, Gambit series, a Magneto series, um, Nightcrawler. Give me some Nightcrawler, baby. You know this already at Tully Television. Uh, but for what we're getting and what my expectations were, uh, it is meeting those expectations, at least, even though they were a little low. Uh, I, I, I enjoy the interaction between her and Scully, her and Henry, and I just hope that, uh, 
when we get to the kingpin part, that that that's thumbs up to Vincent D'Onofrio does dope as the kingpin. But that's my uh, lingering thoughts on episode one and my thoughts on episode two. Let me do know down below what you're thinking of the series. And until next time, peace, Nickums.